my goodness. All right. <laughs> Hello. How is anybody and everybody out there doing today? Oh, hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Hopefully you can see me all right. I'm doing pretty dandy, just in case anybody wanted to ask. Um, it's been a long time since I have streamed on a Friday night. Um, <laughs> hey, Daisuke, how you doing? Uh, it's good to it's good to see you. <laughs> It was good to watch your stream earlier too. It was really cool that uh, Victorian style dress you're working on. Awesome. Um, Friday night fever. Yeah. So <clears throat> I want to get started on a piece that I. Uh, so uh, for those of you who who are familiar with with my Instagram, who are familiar with my anything really, um, I I started this draw this in your style challenge on my on my instagram it's a it's my 2021 draw this in your style challenge i'm trying to think of whether or not i want to start doing more frequent uh dtiys challenges uh but this is the one that i have for uh for right now going through this month uh in honor of day of the dead dia de muertos right so um I was looking at this and I was like, man, I want to be able to go through and and recreate this in 3D. I love doing my own DTIYS. It's kind of it's kind of lame, but you know, I I I have fun. I have fun doing what I what I do, right? And and so that's that's what I wanted to do. Is I want to go ahead and create recreate this in 3D. And I was looking at it and I was like, dang, that pose is actually really quite similar to the pink witch that I sculpted for uh, for the Ross Tran Draw This In Your Style. Um, so I'm going to actually use this as my kickoff point, and I want to be able to see how far I can get, especially like during the stream. We're going to see, we're going to see what we can get through. Um, so a big, uh, just to be able to kind of give you a, a couple of points of the walk down of what we want to do. In fact, while we, while we talk, I'll go ahead and I'll start bringing in that image as um, open, uh, bring it in as a spotlight. Wow, that's big. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be that large. That's funny. Um, so yeah, I was, I'm thinking like to be able to use this as a kickoff point. So what I gotta do, I'm gonna start off by saving this over to the new file. And we're gonna say DTIYS smartest twenty one underscore O one. Cause you know, so going through saying draw this in your style, that's the that's the base file name, and then you know, smartest twenty one to say, okay, we're working under this this genre of file and then version number, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and start deleting things that I don't need. Um, man, I can't, I can't wait for uh, <laughs> for the new version of ZBrush to be able to have the uh, turning things on and off option because that's awesome. Um, let's go through. We'll say delete, delete. Oh, in fact, here's a quicker way to, to do this. So instead of going through and just delete, 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 whatever whatever I don't want, I'm going to turn on my gizmo, turn on my pizza boxes, my multi-sub-tool -tool select, and let's just kind of select the uh, the sub-tools that we want to get rid of. Um, I'll worry about selecting the clothing later, but I want to get rid of the hair, the hat, those things. Let's get rid of that. Uh, you know what, we're here, might as well. Let's grab these pieces. We'll have to do some refinement to the actual anatomy because I'm pretty sure I fudged it a little bit. <laughs> and that's just kind of what you do sometimes, right? This is a quick project, so there are some things that were just entirely too quick. All right, let me see. And then I guess whatever whatever's left. I do want to keep the shoes and I do want to keep the stockings. So we'll we'll do that. 
Um, so yeah, we'll do this. I'll hit Control F to make a new folder. We'll say yes, and then we'll say delete. <laughs> it doesn't really matter the name. Then we'll say delete all. Boom. Oh shoot! I didn't even think about that. The uh, the gloves are completely missing now. The gloves were the hands, so we're gonna have to like bring back some some arms or bring back the uh, the hands from the sculpt. Uh, let's, so let's do this. Um, we're gonna go in here. Okay, let's grab the arms. That's always kind of funny when you have little things. Um, <laughs> just just little things like that where it's like you don't even think about it and you just do it and then all of a sudden you're like <laughs> shoot <laughs> yeah let's say insert we'll say gloves so that we have the arms now the arms i'm going to need to go ahead and, and reposition yeah definitely need to put some clothes on thanks mick <laughs> Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot that needs to be done. In fact, maybe what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll just paint her uh, some clothes so that she has something. <laughs> and then we'll worry about um, refining the anatomy and things like that. I'll leave, I'll leave the, uh, the underwear on because uh, Mike's getting a little bit... Uh, A little bit bashful. <laughs> okay, and kind of pull that out a little bit. It's not lining up perfectly with the anatomy. It's fine. Just enough so that we don't make people bashful and so we can keep it a little bit more peachy. <laughs> RGB. And let's go ahead and we'll select that color right there, cause why not? Oh yeah, uh, it's the, it's got the color texture map on, doesn't it? Nope, doesn't. Oh, there we go. Brush, samples, spotlight projection. Now we can go ahead and we can kind of just paint something on here, just for the sake of making her feel a little less naked you're worried about the twelve uh the twitch overlords yeah yeah i'll uh i'll just kind of paint this out a little bit <laughs> all right so we have some some anatomy things to kind of work out to make sure that this works right. Um, I want to play with the head a little bit. Um, I need and, uh, and mo more than anything, I need to make sure that this is kind of in the right pose. So let's let's start off with that. <clears throat> okay, cool. Now, if any of you were around when I sculpted this in the first place, I can't remember if I sculpted this on on stream or anything like that, but uh, this was an ex an insanely hard pose to, <laughs> to get to feel right. Um, I'll turn that off. Purely because it's so extreme. Um, Interesting. I was expecting that to have gone a little bit differently, but it's all right. Because like my, my poly groups are not based on body parts right now. It looks like it is more for utility for something or other. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the utility was, but uh, we'll get started. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> dude, Mike, it's, it's been a long time since I've, uh, since I've, seen or heard from you is because I'm always like streaming at the like I've changed over to Saturday mornings now at least you know Saturday mornings my time right um how are you doing <laughs> okay there we go
this shoulder is going to need to be like re-sculpted pretty, pretty heavily, but that's okay. I'm probably sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> How can they take issue with the art characters, no nipples, but be perfectly fine with the boob painting streamers? I have no idea. Man, I, I've, I've got like no face light. Let's see if I can. I have like all sorts of lights in my area here. Let me see if I can. That's a little bit better, right? Yeah, a little bit. It's not too bad. The lighting's great on my shirt. <laughs> okay, let's kind of start taking this arm. I need to take the arm and kind of put her back behind the body. So a lot of what, so I mean, you can you can see the topology right here. Uh, these little three-pointed stars are supposed to be kind of right there at the end of the clavicle. Um, where the clavicle meets the, um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm dropping all my, all my names here. Uh, the humerus, the, 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 the shoulder, the shoulder socket and all those, uh, all those things over here. <laughs> A lighting class with smartest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, I've been, I've been pretty good. It's, uh, uh life has been awesome it's been it's been a whirlwind uh to say the least but it's it's been it's been pretty good um we finally had insurance kick in <laughs> oops that's that's losing a little bit too much Okay, let's do that. Okay, I just wanted to be careful not to not to smooth the color because I think, well, I guess it doesn't really matter at this resolution, but at the higher resolutions, I think I have like some freckles painted in. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I saw your Daisy Duck at Disney World photo. Yeah, yeah, Daisy Duck. It's it's that's pretty exciting. I've had I've had a bunch of friends send me send me pictures from when they visit. Um, I honestly don't know if I'll get to visit personally, which is kind of sad. Um, but I'm trying to decide whether or not to do like a family trip out to to Orlando and and go see it. Um, because you know that's it's it's a really cool cool thing to me. You know, <laughs> go check it out. Um, for sure, when my stuff goes in at Tokyo, that's, that's stuff that I will obvious, will very much not miss. Um, my wife isn't, isn't like, <clears throat> she, she's she, like, if she were to travel the world, she'd be very focused on Europe. And that's kind of the, uh, the area where she's, um, most interested in being able to visit. But let's go ahead and kind of reposition her torso. I think I think that like posing her torso is going to be really important to get that done pretty much first. You know what? Let's let's do this instead of uh, transpose master. I should have saved before going into transpose master. I do this way too often. Um, <laughs> just show the kids the statue and then drive back. Good gravy. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. Going and seeing the Tokyo stuff. That'll be that'll be awesome. Uh, and and I I can I can talk about this. I haven't uh, they haven't shown much, but they've shown this i want to i want to let's see if i can pull it up um tokyo disney sea okay 
let's go in images. Oh, that's not my pirate ship, is it? No, that can't be it. Um, you see, I've got to find the pictures. They have they have like the model sheets up. Uh, hey Luke, how you doing? Just got back from Paris and Di uh, from Paris Disney, huh? I've got I've got something going in and over there too on the on the Adventures campus, but I I don't think it's been announced yet what it is, so I can't talk about it. <laughs> ah shucks, where's my? All right, here, let me see. Let's say Fantasy Springs. We'll look, we'll look into that because I know that I know for sure that I've seen pictures of it in looking at the Fantasy Springs stuff. Um, I did my my main area focus was on the Peter Pan ride. Um, and it was awesome. It was so, so cool. Oh, here we go. There, that's kind of a little bit of a of an image that we can look at. There we go. That pirate ship right there. So yeah, the pirate ship is, is what I was most happy to have worked on. <laughs> I essentially designed and, and built it in 3D um, using ZBrush, actually. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of like a like an up close. Ah, it doesn't want to work. Yeah, it's a open image and new tab. That'll be a little bit better. I mean, it, it's it's kind of hard to see. And this is just like a like a foam um, painted model scale model. So it it doesn't look as cool as it looked in in three D. And I can't wait to be able to show like my three D model and all that. But it's 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 awesome it's so cool and i can't wait to be able to go and see it. this is something that people will be able to walk on to and play around on and whatever and and there were a lot of things that i learned in sculpting this particular pirate ship about things like uh like different manufacturing tolerances and being able to put in you know walkways and ramps uh stair considerations drainage considerations you know for like when it rains or if there are tsunamis or things like that, that any any water that gets onto the deck can drain out properly. Um, lots of stuff. There's so much stuff going on with this that that was just awesome and amazing to have been able to to be part of. Uh, but yeah, the primary thing was the was the Peter Pan ride, and I can't wait to to be able to to see more of. Uh, I, oh my gosh, it was looking so cool. Uh, it's looking so cool. I can't wait to see more. But um, but I also did stuff on the Frozen ride. Uh, I think I did stuff on Rapunzel. I'm trying to think. There there are a couple of other rides that I was able to to work on, and it was it was great. It was great. I really really enjoyed my time working with the with the Tokyo Disney Seas team. All right. Oops. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's like there are so many things that go into making amusement parks and making them safe and making them uh, making them amusing and appealing and attractive, you know, things like that. And and and. And oh my gosh, it was it was the trip. It was a it was it was the journey of a lifetime. Being able to being able to learn as much as I as I could from um, from those wonderful wonderful good people that I got to work with there. Let's go ahead and kind of straighten her up a little bit here. There's gonna need to be some uh, some shape change here to make it feel like she's sitting on something. Is like the the witch was sitting on a broomstick, and so and so I have to kind of adjust away from that and make it feel like she's sitting on. I want to make it feel like she's sitting on a ledge, um, or you know some sort of flat surface and so it's gonna obviously put some sort of flat 
shape to, to her bottom. Um, <clears throat> so we'll have to see kind of how how all of this plays out later, but. And the reason, one of the reasons why I wanted to start from this model is that I know that I really, really like how she looks. Um, I know that she's got a lot of the appeal that I want for my character. And so it's just a matter of taking this appeal and pushing it toward a different character rather than, um, rather than having to... Oh yeah, Um, rather than having to start clear over from scratch. Why isn't it working? That's really, really weird. Huh. Oh, it's my RGB intensity. I see it. Doggone it. I think I go through and I call myself the smartest, and then all of a sudden you run into stupid little things like that, and just like, doggone it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it happens. Oh. What are some of the some of the shows that you guys are watching? Have you guys watched Arcane at all? Um, that's been an extremely satisfying series to me so far. I can't wait for the next episodes to come out tomorrow. I want this to be a little bit thicker. Give her a little bit more width and a little bit less um, it's like she's she's a little bit too like the, sh the shape's not quite right so I'm just trying to play around with that a little bit and like I was saying before too I need to kind of adjust these the shapes of her breasts here so that they feel a little bit more Is that where I want that to happen? Yes, I think so. Okay. Okay, let's keep Oh man, this this is getting so messy. But it's okay. I mean, it's something that, you know, it's going to get messy. Take her head and kind of adjust it away from her body some. Just how it is. <clears throat> Since you're here, do you mind if I ask a question? Having trouble using Scale Master. That is a good question. Uh, Scale Master is actually not something that I've used. Um, <clears throat> not a whole lot anyway. It's one of those things that it works kind of like the 3D print master or the 3D print uh, hub uh, in that you need to make sure that you go through and you um, sliders to subtool size is the is kind of like the first starting point. So in order to get there, you know, you can see you go through this is these are your measurements now and this is in millimeters. So if I were to go through and change that to, to centimeters slider to subtool size, you see that adjust down and shows you that you're down to, you know, two two and a little bit change there, uh, centimeters in the X direction, um, 20 something, 20 and a half millimeters in, uh, you know, so, so you can, you can go through and you can kind of re do things like that. If you wanted to make adjustments, uh, to the actual size, you can go through and you can say, um, I mean, I don't want to make adjustments to the size, but you can go ahead and you can say something like, Oops, sorry, my numlock is not being happy right now. So you can go through, you can put in your number, whatever value you want, 
and you go through and you say resize subtool and it'll go ahead and it'll um it'll kind of it'll resize your subtool to to fit that scale <clears throat> and if you have that all on it's going to go ahead and do that uh, to all your subtools um i like doing it when you're in transpose master because then you get everything resized at the same time instead of having to worry about um a specific size being uh, 120 millimeters or 120 centimeters 120 feet because uh, it because that's that's one of the ways that you can kind of get around it is that if you're if you if you're wanting to do something that's you know 120 millimeters you can work in centimeters uh, you can work in centimeters and put it at 1.2 uh, or sorry at, at 12 um, <clears throat> and then uh, yeah that way that way you get the uh, yeah so you put it like 12 oh sorry 120 for for millimeters if you go to centimeters you know it'll 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 allow you to kind of make that change so so it's just kind of like changing between your different units and being able to to work that way <clears throat> That's how, that's how I would how I go about that, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I I wouldn't ever use inches or feet uh, just because I much prefer centimeters and millimeters and meters and <laughs> it's so much easier. So much, in fact, uh, one of the things that I that I got while I was at Disney. Um, I got myself a little a little tape measure, and I mean on the on the one side it's got centimeters. It's kind of it's kind of hard to see, I guess, uh, in there. But on the one side it has centimeters, and then on the other side it's got inches, uh, inches and feet. So it's super helpful. One of my one of my supervisors at Disney had one of those, and it was awesome. It was awesome. I I, I <laughs> she would she would whip it out, and she'd be like. Oh, I need the openings to be 120, uh, 120 millimeters. And she'd whip it out. She'd look at it like, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, and it was just, it was, it was funny. It was funny. Man, I want to, I'm on a Disney train today. I miss it. I, I soup like I love my job. I love my job, but I miss my Disney job so so much. Um I miss the people that I worked with. I miss the type of work I was doing. I mean I was in ZBrush constantly and now i'm rarely in zbrush i mean i'll be i'll be doing some zbrush stuff for for work on monday um but there's definitely a lot less zbrush work for me um which you know it's fine whatever it is what it is <laughs> but it's definitely one of those things that i'd love to get back to, to doing more ZBrush stuff for work. Okay, let me see if I can kind of fix some of these forms here in the chest. And we'll, we'll fix it more like as we go along. I probably won't even go ahead and finalize like the anatomy here in the chest right now. Um, Yeah, that's probably good for now. Okay, let's keep working on this pose and fixing her posture and things like that. In fact, I'm trying to decide. Yeah, that's something like that's a little bit better. I think that's a little bit better. see just watch the first the first Dexter 
yeah, feeling, uh, feeling powder to become jinx, uh, bad bottom lane, yeah, for sure. If I make a cube and set it the size of 200, it won't let me, throws up an error message. That's interesting. Um, one of the other things that you could do, and think what we would typically do actually, <clears throat> I can't remember what program it is that they would use, um, but there was you know, some CAD program that we would use to be able to create a one meter cube. And we would always use that one meter cube as our, is it one meter, one, one meter, I'm pretty sure it's one meter. Um, we would always use that one meter cube to, to kind of measure against. Um, it's it's a lot different from. I mean, sometimes we would also have like a like a Denison model, like a like a humanoid, not humanoid, a human model, <laughs> um, where um, where the where they were like a like an average six foot tall human male character to be able to measure against um that was always helpful but it was always more helpful to have the one meter cube um so that we could we could easily uh measure out exactly because like a lot of the a lot of the rides were you know we had to we had to know like the the five meter point or we had to know the uh the seven meter point or different things like that <clears throat> and so we could just stack those cubes on top of each other um to be able to really easily and quickly uh, get a reading for the piece that we're trying to measure and deal out um one of the things i i like to do inside of zbrush um and a lot of people just knock it you know but it's this is insanely helpful is getting this this um uh, transpose line and using that to be able to measure you can see it's got the different ticks there and um let me see knowing let me see preferences draw it has been a little while since i've done this it might actually be it's actually a different a different spot right yeah transpose so you can see, like we got the we got the different size for this for the circles radius if we wanted to. Um, right now, it's saying that the axis length is, is at eighty. That's the uh, the central, you know, the to show you the direction that it's pointing, right? Um, and then you have this. Um, where is it at? Transpose units. Okay, so unit scale of one. <clears throat> okay. And you can say set set units. So you can go ahead and say instead of just saying units, you could say uh, you could say centimeters, you know, or you could say you, you could say foot. But I'll just leave it at units. Um, and then you can change, you know, your major minor ticks, uh, calibrating your distance, things like that. So so these different things are super helpful to be able to to really peg things down. If you are working in a scale that you that you know and you know exactly kind of what your scale is. By going up in here to your scale master, you know, getting your sliders to sub tools, and you can see like the two two centimeters. So, yeah. Anyway, so you can go through and take that. Oh, that's which direction was that? That was okay. So let's go ahead and three point nine in the y direction. So let's go ahead and just kind of drag this down. Go back into preferences. Let's actually dock this over to the side so we can get to it. So let's see, set units to centimeters. Okay. So right now, technically this is reading at like 37 centimeters long uh, based, on, based on the units of what's there already. So if we, let me see, I'm trying to, I'll lengthen this out something like that so we'll come in here and hit four okay so now we have one two three four so if we look at this this is saying it's four centimeters tall now okay 
which if we line this up exactly with the top of the head and exactly the bottom of the foot, that'll be about, that'll be about right. So, you know, <clears throat> it's hard with the, with the way that it's kind of, um, <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of offset. So it's hard for me to be able to measure exactly with this, but, uh, but yeah, using the transpose tool to be able to measure, it's insanely helpful. So being able to measure like the length of our leg, you know, you can see like this is 1.372 centimeters. Yeah, that's that's super helpful. And since it snaps to since it snaps to vertices, you know, I can go through and say, all right, the uh, the, the the length of her eye. Let's go ahead and check the length of her eye. Okay, so the the width of her eye is 0 0.1035 centimeters. <laughs> You know, so it's it's <clears throat> obviously way too small for human size, but you know, it's it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, let me see. Um, are you going to use posable symmetry now that you've done all this symmetrical work? Now, um, I might use a little bit of posable symmetry. Posable symmetry is kind of tricky because it has, um, like, it, it's kind of picky. Uh, it's one of those things that's that's really kind of tricky to work with. It's it it is it it is and it has gotten a lot better with recent versions, uh, like with the new adjustments that they've made in the in the coming version. Um, that they were talking about at the summit. That's always really exciting, really cool to, to see and and to think about is is how the uh, is how they've been able to modify and change, kind of strengthen the tool. So let's see. Let's let's. I don't think I'd be able to, to use um, posable symmetry with this as it is right now because it, it has you know, all these separate pieces. Um, <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll wait until I get back into the other. Let's go ahead and Oops. I'm just going to start to consider the angle that I'm looking at her at. And I'm, I'm just trying to keep it so that it's kind of more consistent with what I am, um, with what I'm seeing with what I have in my concept. Uh, and I just want to have it so that I can look at it from a flat angle and be able to tell like, you know, okay, this is working or okay, I need to, I need to strengthen something. This might be an opportunity, this spot right here, the way that this shape flows, it might be an opportunity for me to, to really step back and, and consider what's happening with the anatomy. I feel like, I feel like scale wise, like if we were to look at this, let's kind of turn off perspective for a second here. Let's kind of rotate this. Um, Okay. I mean it's not it's not too too bad, but there is like a like a length of the of the torso issue happening right here. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and say let's open our time mark our, our timeline. We'll add a marker so we can go back to that point. <clears throat> I'm going to need to reposition this leg cuz that's not working for me, but uh yeah, hopefully that works for what you're asking, Ruben. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's go ahead and let's pull this out now. In fact, here's what I'm going to do. Let's, let's pull this out just so I can have, you know, the two points here that I can kind of switch between. Okay, so I, I, I'm seeing that there's a lot less neck than there ought to be in the concept. The torso looks really long. I like the proportions right here. 
So what I need to do right now is kind of assess whether or not this is working, uh, whether or not this is working as a whole. And I feel like, I feel like I want to add a little bit more shoulders. So we're going to have to kind of play with that some. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is starting to work. Uh, control shift X. Okay, I get something like that. <clears throat> the concept must be seven feet tall. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, she she looks like. <coughs> And granted, this is this is like a really fast like speed painting that, for some reason, took me a year to do. <laughs> I did it in my spare time and just kind of tinkered with it here and there and didn't really pay any attention to it until like the day before I actually posted it. Um, but one of the things that that I find to be really important about this is, uh, well, like noticing like the length of that torso, that, that torso is unnaturally long and there's just not enough neck, you know? So it's like, <laughs> it's just, it's just funny. I, I wish I had noticed those things before I had gone through and finished, but the shapes overall looks nice. And so, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see. Just kind of pull this in a little bit. I feel like, um, the way that this that this tummy is, I kind of just want to have this kind of smooth out a little bit. I want to I want to try to create this this little bit of a of a shape change right here. Um, let's see if I can show clearly enough. But I want to I want to get kind of like a kind of like a like a like a slope up and then a plateau and then like a slope up and then a plateau. And, and that sort of thing is going to help to kind of strengthen the shape language of the character. So just kind of bring that back a little bit. Something kind of like that for now. We'll come back to it later when we decide we don't like it. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, Ruben. It it's it's fun and I'm I'm really glad that I um I'm glad that I did it because I don't know. I, I, I always I always enjoy being able to push my creativity and to be able to think out concepts and uh, things of that nature. And, and I feel like this was a this was an idea. This character is just she's one that I've wanted to, to play around with for a long, long time. And to finally get to it's awesome. Ah, it's terrible. Yeah, let's do this. Why isn't that? Oh, it's because I'm using this stinking. Let's 
do that. Okay, so there is our first arm. Let's go ahead and straighten her out. Kind of pull that over more into the middle. Now, the <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of this sort of thing happening here. And I'm going to have to play around with the uh, wrinkles and things like that later because that's that's something I mean there aren't really actually even going to be any wrinkles technically because it's going to be skin um, I still need to go through and kind of mesh those things together right so smooth that out and then I'm hoping that I'll be able to uh, to be able to add this back into the into the torso and then I got a couple of like paper envelopes down at my foot um, and then be able to, to down res it so that I can get a little bit more control over the shape. So right here, this is getting a little bit too out of control. In fact, here's what we'll do. Let's say, now that we have this, let's, let's, go, let's go back over here. Dock this. Transpose master, T post sub T, boom, 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 and it's all done. Boom. Okay, let's save this so that we don't lose it. Um, smartest 21. Yes, please. Have you ever had uh, to model a character with exaggerated anatomy like Bayonetta? Bayonetta. I'm gonna to have to check that one out. Which which character is this? Oh. Yeah, I don't know who this character is. Um. Lady Gaga. Gaga is great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, honestly, I don't know who that is. I, let me see. Exaggerated anatomy for a character. Well, I mean, it's like a lot of, a lot of what I like to do um, in my, in my own time is like, let me see if we can pull it up. You profile. Uh, character. It's like, you know, like really stylized shapes. Um, but like, so far as like super exaggerated, um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I do more, more stylized. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so like really, really stylized graphic shapes, things like that. This this is a character I did to be able to to really push uh, kind of some of my my design sense and things like that. But really, like with with anything that you model, anything that you sculpt, uh, you're you're applying the same principles. You're just kind of looking at proportions. You're trying to fit you know different different looks and feel. Um, trying to figure out how to best support the character so really like like everything everything you model it's it's all going to be kind of a, kind of the same in in that sort of sense so that's that's what i like to think about a lot with characters versus environments versus props like everything everything really has uh, a lot of the same principles to it and so um, 
So yeah, it's it's always kind of a tricky thing to me. Um, trying to draw that line, if you will. And let's close that because we don't need it. And then we'll close. Uh, I didn't want to close that per se. Oh well. Uh, geometry, delete hidden. And then let's see if it'll reconstruct. It is awesome. Okay, so where are we at? We've got this. That looks like that'll match up. Nice. Okay, so I don't need my higher subdivisions anymore. Um, everything can just be done with this. <clears throat> One of the things I want to do, let's let's kind of get the, the skin tone to like this purplish color. Um, so we'll just turn on our spotlight. And as long as spotlight's on and you have it like fully opaque, uh, I can come over here and I can hit C to be able to color pick off of my off of my image. That is insanely helpful. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and turn that off. I, I don't necessarily need it to be uh, transparent at the moment. So we'll just leave it how it is for, for a minute. Um, ooh, I see some Let's just paint the whole face stuff in here. It looks super not appealing at the moment, so we'll have to kind of decide what it is that we want to get out of this in a minute. Um, fill objects, so we've got the arms that are the same as the body. Um, what is the name of the streamer of this session? Steven Anderson. Sorry, maybe I should have put um I should have put my name in there. Hello. My name is Baymax. Yeah. I'll go ahead and put that in the chat so you guys can see that. <laughs> I'm gonna say with deformation, let's go ahead and say just deflate it a little bit so that it more closely matches the uh, the thickness of the arm. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Jesse? Oh, is it really still in there as Dope Pope? I went ahead and changed it at the beginning of the stream. Maybe it's something that... Uh... Man. Yeah, I don't know. I, I swear I swear it's supposed to be... Yeah, it's, it's, it says that it's uh, that it's right on the uh, on the restream on online maybe maybe it's just a matter of it having been done during the stream <sighs> i don't know i'm a terrible human being <laughs> no hopefully hopefully that uh hopefully that works hopefully it'll sort it out um after the fact all right let's see got the arms let's kind of bring this where's the there we go. Here's the body. Actually, let's, let's bring the body up. Let's merge it down so that they're the same. And then, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this last, these last couple of loops. Let's do that. I'm gonna pull that away. Okay, it's, that's definitely driving me nuts with having it too opaque because now I don't have as, as much screen space and so it's like, I can't see. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I love I love playing around in ZBrush and, and there are a lot of different things that uh, that I like to do that other people don't necessarily do. 
Um, and there are a lot of things that other people do that I would love to be better at, you know, it's <laughs> like, uh, well, like Michael Pavlovich, like for instance, he's on here. He's a, another streamer. Um, yeah, it's, uh, he's probably one of the most knowledgeable ZBrush users that I've ever seen. And it's, it's always fun to see the way that uh, he's able to go ahead and use things, but use it quickly. And oh my gosh, just floors me. And I, it does the same for everybody, right? Like everybody's just floored watching PV, uh, uh, not PV. Oh my goodness. Uh, my, 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 my Pavlovich watching, watching Pavi <laughs> go through and, and, uh, and do these awesome things so quickly. Yeah. For me, I, <laughs> I'm more of the slow and steady kind. <laughs> okay. So right here, one of the things I'm seeing is that the arm, like the upper arm is way too long, way too long. And let me check. Yeah, we might need to get rid of some uh, some edge loops, which is fine. But yeah, I just kind of want to adjust the uh, proportions a little bit roughly real quick here. It's funny because like the upper arm over here looks short compared to the lower arm. So we're just going to adjust that down a little bit. But this one, it was the opposite. So it's just kind of funny. <laughs> I only look good after I edit my own videos. <laughs> Oh, oh man oh man yeah if only you could edit your live streams <laughs> you're a wizard you're a wizard michael yeah let me see let's get rid of a couple of edge loops here and there just to be able to and what i'll probably do is i'll ask, i'll 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 fall I'll also go ahead and uh, <clears throat> and uh, try to redistribute polygroups because um, one of the things that gets really tricky is that if I if I keep these polygroups the way that they are, it makes it a little bit trickier to control things and to be able to select things and <clears throat> pose things and the like, right? So like right here, having a having a polygroup partition right here where the elbow is supposed to be. I'm not gonna block that in for right now just to be able to show where that's supposed to be at, but you know. <laughs> Jump cutting to a new sculpt and speeding up the sculpt in real life. <laughs> Talk show podcast, isn't it art? Indeed. This is definitely working much, much nicer. Um, let me see. Let's let's do this. Yeah, control shift X a few times. Let me see. Do we have the same number of edges on this side as the other? It is kind of hard to tell. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Because I know for sure that these two are the same now. Let's go ahead and control W. Yeah, it should be fine. I should be fine. <coughs> Hola, amigo ecuatoriano. <laughs> ¿Cómo te va? Yeah, it is our little bit of little bit of talk, you know. It's it's uh it's it's one of my favorite things actually. I I really really enjoy um the live streaming aspect of the ZBrush community uh because there's just camaraderie, you know, especially in this time of of pandemic and everything. It's so nice to be able to you know, to just chat, just have fun. 
associate with people, especially people from other parts of the world that I wouldn't be able to see otherwise, right? Um, let's kind of fix that spot here in the back of her neck. I think I tried to fix it too much. Just trying to make sure that the uh, that the shoulder muscles in here are kind of starting to feel a little bit better. There's a lot of fixing that needs to happen with this, but you know, it'll happen. It'll happen. Ay, que bien. Let's go through. I'm gonna make sure that these are each different polygroups because that'll make it a lot easier to pose. I'm going to want to... Um, Bella, how are you doing? It has been a while. That's definitely off. Let's see. One of the things I'm going to need to do is kind of repose this head just a little bit. Because uh, you'll see one of the things that that I'm seeing here in the in the in the concept that I need to get reflected in in this uh, in this version is that the head's kind of tilted down a little bit more and it's like she's kind of like sitting sitting up like she's kind of straightening herself up a little bit her head's kind of pulled back and there's a little bit more of like a... I want there to be kind of like this serenity but also like a coquette like 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 um like a flirty sort of sort of feel to it so so there's going to need to be something like this let's go ahead and select just the head so that way we get all of the interior assets here i might lengthen her neck just a little bit i don't know we'll see We'll have to see. And I need to definitely play with the expression because that expression is definitely not right for this particular character. <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, this month, uh, this month only really, um, I'll, I'll be streaming on uh, Friday evenings. I've got two Friday evenings that I'll be streaming on. It's today, and then I've got, uh, shoot, what's the day? Uh, two weeks from now, two weeks from today. And... And, uh, yeah, just just having fun. Let's see, let's go to, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to go to, to transform, let's go to symmetry, and let's say use posable symmetry, and see if it gives us, <laughs> symmetry map was not stored. Okay, so symmetry is not going to be an option for us, which is fine, it's fine. Let's go ahead and grab these. It's working at a game studio, huh? Okay, let's see if we can get this uh, this expression going on. Still trying to do some personal. Uh, work now and then nice to see you on stream tonight i'm doing pretty well <clears throat> yeah i just uh i've been i've been kind of missing the community and and wanted to to jump jump in and 
enjoy some time, you know? Um, oh no, it looks like it, it looks like it merged a few of my points together when I used um, my Z modeler. That's always one of the trickiest things for me with Z modeler is, um, is how it goes through and, and welds things together. It's a nice thing if it does it, you know, if so it has a lot to do with your scene scale. So my scale currently is probably way, way smaller than it ought to be. And so the Z modeler weld tolerance, which you can find like up here and under preferences, is it geometry and the Z modeler welding tolerance? You bring that down to one. Um, yeah, I mean, even even at the at the scale that I'm at right now, it's not going to really matter a whole lot. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty nice big deal if you're uh, if you're working with something that's supposed to be for production. Okay, I suspect yeah, maybe it, maybe it didn't mess that up, but it definitely messed up my edge flow around here, and that's oh, so frustrating, so frustrating. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of start building out these uh, building out these lips a little bit. Um, get some tap. Hi man, work. Uh, I'm wondering where do you stream from? Seems like you're streaming out of your kitchen. Yeah, we have these uh, these cabinets. Uh, whoever it is that designed our house. Uh, was not thinking very much about functionality. And so there are random cabinets here in our hallway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a hallway outside of uh, outside of my bedroom. Like if I take you on a quick tour, maybe you can see uh, maybe not. You can see my shelf. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't show it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Uh, no, I will definitely not retop of this. <laughs> this is something that'll be done as like a as like a personal project for fun sort of thing. It's definitely not going to be a major portfolio project or anything like that where everything needs to be absolutely perfect. Uh, I just want it to be to be nice. You know, so a few things that I want to think about while I'm going through and working on this, though, is that I want her to feel dead. I want her to feel young. Uh, I want her to feel uh, not scary. Um, and so part of what I need to do, I mean, I don't want her to feel like right now she's feeling too childish. And a lot of that's going to ha going to change when I go ahead and uh, play with the lip here. Um, and getting these these lips to really reflect what's going on with the uh, with the attitude with the with the look of the character. Um, and say a pen bring in a sphere. Wow. Yeah, that, that shows you how small this project is. Uh, these spheres are really, really good to, to work with. I like using them for, oh shoot, that's not what I wanted. Um, I like using them for things like eyeballs and the like, but that was an insane amount of so much bigger. This is, this is, this is like, a they're unified. They're, they're kind of, I'll, I'll say original size, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a very simple and uh, clean scale inside a ZBrush, and so for it to be, it's kind of cool looking with the with the hair like that. I kind of almost want to leave it and just make it something different. Um, 
for it to be that much bigger than my than my character shows that there's definitely a huge huge lack of uh scale unity in my in my scene so what i might end up doing and let me see let me check the uh the hands yeah the hands have some i'll call them boogers and i suspect that there are probably problems in the in the crotch and down in the feet and things like that yeah. Yeah, you can see some some point welding around the toenails and whatever. Dang it. But yeah, uh, this is kind of how it goes sometimes. Um, man, Mike, when you were talking about not not Pavlovich, uh, Mick uh, from from the UK. Um, Shoot, I'm forgetting your last name. The Cimmerian King. Um, <laughs> when you were talking about the uh, using the scale, using the scale master inside a ZBrush, I should have just taken that opportunity to check and modify my scale. That would have been all too perfect. <laughs> but of course, you know, me being <laughs> just not thinking, just not thinking. Yeah, let's go ahead and select these. That neck is feeling really thick now because I pulled everything back. So it's just kind of. And I think there might might also be a huge discrepancy with like the thickness of the neck here. So if we fix that, I think that that'll feel a little bit better. It's definitely feeling like a different character and I want to make her feel like she's the same character. Uh, so what I need to do, I, like there are a lot of things that I can do to be able to kind of go back and forth and compare and contrast and get the, get the shapes to feel a lot better. Um, Let's see. Let's 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 go back to our spotlight position. Okay, so we can see there's a huge difference kind of like where these things are po are posed. She definitely feels a lot younger. I do want her to feel older. Cuz like my um my sketch, my painting Oh, Danny Max is stud. He's so so good. Um But yeah, she she feels like she's early 20s, like 22ish. Um uh, if we were to compare her to uh a lot, a living human male uh, sorry, human female character. <laughs> I was talking about the Denison characters earlier. Um So yeah, a living human female um, she feels like she'd be about like 22, maybe. Um, so maybe if I were to aim to get her to be a little bit older than this, I need to make her eyes bigger to take up more real estate on her face. Um, I need to tilt the head up. I need to thin the neck out. There are a lot of things that I'm that I'm seeing. You know, as you step back, it's like taking these step backs. It's super super helpful just to make sure that you're kind of keeping your head grounded with what it is that you're working in. If you don't mind me asking, what would be some good things for a student to put in their portfolio for character modeling? Um, so for a student, the big thing, the big thing, like if you want to get into character modeling, um, you don't, you don't necessarily need to show that you can make your own concepts and do your own things. What a studio wants is to, sh is for you to show that you can do their things. 
So it's not necessarily that you have to. It's not necessary that you have to go and and say you want to work at Walt Disney Animation Studios. You get a whole bunch of Disney concepts and you model the Disney concepts. Um, they want to see a range, so they want to see that you can that you can handle um, something really really stylized, really shape based, really anatomy based. Um, lots of different lots of different sort of things. Um, but then they also want to see that you can handle somebody else's concept. So you, you work from somebody else's work uh, when you do stuff for your portfolio more than anything. Um, for myself, I have a, a lot of like my own personal works or whatnot that I've kind of art directed myself or that I've designed myself and things like that. Um, and I think that to some degree like if you if you if you can if you can if you can pull it off and do something like that uh then you know totally go for it but <laughs> but yeah um we yeah, got my recommendation would be to definitely model from somebody else's concept um always get permission from the artist to use their concept because otherwise there are some awkward uh, posting battles on <laughs> social media of like art thievery and things like that. Um, so yeah, you ask ask permission to use to use concepts and then give credit when you use them. So uh, yeah, uh, really like that's that's the big big thing is being able to just oh, it drives me nuts how how terribly terribly bad um oops Oh, I didn't even think about that. Let's go ahead and do this. But yeah, I mean that's 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 like the biggest thing. Um especially as a student. Um is trying to go through and make sure that you're That you're showing how you can be helpful in a in a production environment by showing how well you can handle making somebody else's concepts. Here, let's see. Let's go ahead and hide that. Let's go ahead and say um, RGB. And we'll turn this down to something lower so we can. Do something like this. And then I'll just kind of fill this a couple of times until it feels pretty decent. That's all right. That's all right for now. <laughs> Want to become famous? Buy followers and viewers on bigfollows.com. <laughs> what about making a character by real people reference? Um, so I I don't do a whole lot of realism. Uh, most of what I do is is stylized. 
Um, like I'm really kind of liking how that's turning out so far. So maybe I'll keep that more how that is. Um, yeah, I do. I do a lot of stylized stuff. Um, however, uh, some of the some of the presentations from the ZBrush Summit that I have found extremely helpful for doing realism um, and realistic portraits and things like that. Uh, you could look at anything by uh, what's his name, Ian Spriggs or uh, Chris Costa, um, or oh shoot, it seemed like there was somebody else that did something this past ZBrush Summit that was just it just blew my mind. Um, I can't, I can't think off the top of my head who it was, but it was, it was amazing. And, uh, yeah, so, so doing, doing things like, like, uh, knowing how to use your reference and, and getting really good at, um, getting really good at, you know, lining up your images and, and using good reference and oh yeah I'm liking how this is turning out okay okay this is going to turn out like way differently than I think I was originally planning but I'm like way okay with it. And I think, I think that's, that's kind of part of the, uh, it's, it's always, it's always one of my favorite things is like when I'm working on, um, when I'm working on a character and I feel like it's going, it's going well, but it's, but there's just something off. And then I do just the right thing. And it just, sometimes it's by accident. Uh, like like right here where it's like it's it's just by accident that you know this face isn't isn't the same but I'm liking it for now and I'm liking the way that the hair shape is it's not the same as my concept uh, but this is a, a moment where I'm trying to decide exactly what to do with it yeah let's let's maybe pull this down let's Let's go ahead and kind of so what, what I'm trying to do is like with hair you always want to think about where it's coming from and where it's flowing um, and what's affecting it so you're going to have things like weight or moisture or how it's uh, how it's dressed you know is it curly what's that what's the uh, the actual body of it you know that's right those sorts of things um, lots of lots of lots of things go into what makes our hair flow and, and and shape generally speaking so these are some of the some of my favorite things to think about uh, when I'm thinking about hair thinking about where it comes from the roots right and then where it flows to and what's making it uh, what's making it change and what's making it sit the way it's sitting you know different things gravity wind whatever whatever's uh, prompting the shape that it's sitting in at the moment let me see And then I'm trying to trying to go through and treat it from different sides so that it's uh, so that it's not boring, you know, because hair is one of those things that we see it all the time. And so we know kind of what it looks like. And so I try to give like a little sense of of uh, of excitement with it and try to do something a little unexpected. But I also try to base what I'm doing in reality everything from the flow and where it's coming from where it's going to uh, to the shape uh, to things like that but I like to I like to push and pull that shape more than anything let's see geometry let's go ahead and turn on some low resolution dynamesh I don't know how how low resolution we'll need but we'll a lot higher resolution than that that's how small our scene is <laughs> that's insane um, let's do this. It's not quite high enough. Let's go to like, let's go to like 256. 
That sounds like everybody just got home. There we go. That'll work. Hey, kiddo. Yeah. Just trying to trying to make sure that I'm understanding the comments and I'm following the comments that are happening. Uh, so if if you uh, if you comment on something and it, or if you uh, or if you ask a question you didn't get a response, you know, feel free to feel free to ask again or to. Hey, dude, Reno. Where'd you guys go? Want to what? Nice. Is that one of the characters from the show or something? Uh -huh. uh, What's that? Mommy? No, this is La Muerte. What's up, miss? We went to Target, a different one, and they had cars. So Mom said not to bring my money. <laughs> but I want to buy it. Oh, God. I just want it. I want it so bad it hurts. I know you do. Can I buy it sometime? Hey, Starlet, you're very loud. Oh. Can I get it sometime? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see, let's kind of pull this out a little bit. I'm trying to go through uh, when when I'm doing hair. I like kind of doing a balance of some snake hook and some clay buildup and some just regular move brush. Those are kind of like the brushes that I find to be the most helpful when I'm playing with this stuff. Yeah, it's not going to be high enough resolution. Let's take it up to 512. So that when we smooth it out, it's not going to totally lose itself in the in the remeshing. Okay, so one of the things I want to kind of um, that I kind of want to watch for and I want to be careful of is that I need to make sure that I'm very aware of how it matches up with the body. If it's uh, if it's trying to avoid the body or you know what's what's going on there. Oh, let me see. I'm going for about a, an hour and a half on this so far. Every time I pick up a project to start working on it, I always very naively think that I'll be able to get a lot further along than I do. <laughs> okay, I'm going to 
to keep that hair pretty uh, pretty smooth for right now. So yeah, remember how I said I like to really work with transpose line? This is one of those opportunities where I love using the transpose line. I'll just kind of hold alt and then just use that end dot. Let's go ahead and do something like this. Let's check it from the back. And we'll just kind of realign some, some of these shapes. I feel like it's coming out too far right here. So I'm just trying to like streamline this shape right here see if that works you know no that's not what I want um, one of the things I need to do since I'm working with clay buildup and clay buildup loves to um, Are the air sirens in my background? I hope not. <laughs> um, I need to turn on my back face masking so that it doesn't totally screw up the opposite side of my sculpt <laughs> as I sculpt. Okay, and then I love using like that alternate that alternative function to the clay buildup as I am sculpting with this. So helpful. You know, it's really easy to just get some nice forms, like some nice hair forms. Kind of push in and pull out. And it's awesome. Okay, really quickly, it starts to, to really help you to define something nice, something that, that has a good feel to it. Let me see, what are your guys' favorite uh, what are some of your guys' favorite streamers to, to watch and listen to? And what do you what do you typically watch for? Do you watch to be entertained? Do you watch to get new tips and tricks? Do you watch for the camaraderie for the uh, commu the sense of community? Oh, here's something that I that I like to do. So I want to I want to kind of play with the the shape a little bit. Right now it's got like this very gentle swoop right here, gentle swoop right here, gentle swoop. I, you know, I kind of want to give it a little bit more of like a like a swoop and then like a like a change in direction right here. So what I'm going to do with my move brush, I'm going to go ahead to the curve and accu curve that. And I'm just going to kind of pull that out, and you see how that's changing. So it's got like this this break in that curve, and that helps to make that curve just a little bit more dynamic. Just boom, something like that. And that's not, maybe not so much right there. We can do something like with that right there as well. I'm gonna pull that down. Oh boy. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of working for me right there. That's kind of working. Hello, is it better to sculpt clothes before posing or after? It kind of depends on what you're going for. Um so for instance, for production, um I want to have my clothing modeled 
before posing because it's going to go off to rigging it's going to go off to animation and it needs to um you know it needs to fit the character in that t pose so that when it's simulated it'll get uh you know it'll it'll kind of fit the pose it'll fit whatever the character does if i'm working on a character that's posed sometimes i'll go through and i'll make the clothing before i pose and then just kind of pose the clothing to the to the pose um but sometimes i'll go through and i'll actually just wait until after the character's all posed and then start building out the clothes on top of it uh, for this particular piece um it's a, it's 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 going to be more kind of the latter there where it's you know she's got the pose and then she's going to be she's going to be kind of reworked to uh or like the clothing's going to be um turn that off turn that off I'm trying to think if i want to keep the shoes or not painting out the bottom half of her body here so that it's let's make it darker just colors wise I think that that's going to help me stay more in the in the right mind for what I want to see happen with the character Okay, so now that we have some of this happening in through here, I want to go ahead and start refining and reposing these legs because um, it's they're not in the right position for this particular character. Um, we got so many things to kind of like pose and repose, but it's it's like <laughs> it's just fun um, after the posing because of the physical adjustment. Yeah, so one of the things that's really really nice about doing clothing for for a sculpt. Um, after it's posed is that you it allows you to be able to go through and think about the folds a little bit more intentionally um, but if you if you pose the clothes after you know let me see let me see, let me see. so if you if you build the clothes to the character and then pose everything together you can still get a lot of um, really good results like let me show you an example I mean, this this one was done that way, where it was posed with, um, uh, um, it was built in T pose and then posed um, with the clothing. Uh, this one is really really fun, and she was done in T pose and then kind of built out. Um, and then posed, you know. Some things, though, like the, uh, for instance, the uh, the ice cream on the shoulders. Uh, those things, those elements, were done after the pose because of <laughs> how difficult it was to make sure that the uh, that the ice cream, that the cream itself, stayed in contact with the uh, with the shoulder piece. Oh, hi, Margaret. <laughs> um so yeah just really really kind of a fun a fun piece to be able to to look at and, and talk about that specific point um other characters like for instance this 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 character i mean i need to go through and, and redo her clothing altogether because of new things that i've learned about traditional japanese clothing that i had no idea about before um yeah this this isn't reminiscent of a female goddess type figure so you know there there are a lot of things that i need to go through and redo to make this work properly that and like the the actual clothing feel uh of of these different pieces it, it just doesn't feel enough like cloth it's an older piece but it's uh you know you learn things and so you always want to go back and kind of rework it 
uh, this is one that I had modeled out in T-Pose and then had posed with the clothes, you know, and it, and it worked really, really well. Uh, so a lot of what you just want to do is you want to pay attention to your topology and, and getting things to work right. Um, if you're working with uh, with just sculpt, um, you can you can oftentimes just get away with just sculpting things in place, uh, like I'm doing here, <laughs> you know. So it's there's there's a lot, there's just a lot. Um, yeah, that's too much. Okay, let me see. Let's come over here, come over here. I like to set my keyboard shortcuts. Um, I don't I don't rearrange my UI, if you've noticed. Uh, a lot of people ask me about that, like why I use the standard UI. Um, it's just because I, I like it. Um, it's really simple. If I'm showing things to people who are new to ZBrush or who are, you know, just in class, I teach classes at Nomen. Um, you know, in when I teach classes, if I just have things where they are by standard, it just makes it really easy for people to, to pick up on it, um, on exactly where. Here, control W. Um, yeah, it just makes it really, really easy for people to, to know where to find things if, if everything's in a familiar spot. Uh, same thing for like, if my supervisor were to come by and needed to, oh no, vert welded. Yeah, let's do this. In fact, let's let's do this so that this is like really really different. And I can say, let's just grow this out until it stops being green. And you can see like it should be just fine. So I'll hit Control W. Okay. Once I start posing this leg, that's where it's going to become quite obvious where it's welded together. Um, let's kind of pose it from underneath here first. So you can see there's, the, there's that little point. Uh, we'll have to go through and actually fix that. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely need to fix that. We'll fix it here in a second. Um, one of the other things I thought about doing was um, just keeping it so that it, she has like her legs kind of crossed like this and having the, the shoes and everything like that. But it was like, <clears throat> it doesn't feel like it fits in with the character per se. So I don't know. It's one of those things that I'm still trying to debate. While I'm uh, while I'm debating about that, actually, let's let's go ahead and start drawing on this uh, this golden piece here. I'm just going to draw across her chest. Let's draw across this way, and I'm going to keep it really really simple at first, uh, just from the standpoint that I want to make sure that it's um, more than anything that it's going to uh, keep a keep a simple shape um, and I'll, I'll keep it like really simple like this just going all the way down the stomach Let me see. Yeah. 
Hey, thank, thanks for that. Oh, good grief. Hold on a second. Sorry. Grab some water. Whew. So yeah, this is the... Thank you for sending the video through, by the way. Uh, Mike Pavlovich is going through and kind of d demonstrating some, uh, some really cool <clears throat> cloth techniques. It looks like he's probably going to use the spotlight to be able to to do that quick zebra shirt let's kind of jump through a little bit oh so he's using uh the extract z remesher yeah it's really cool stuff <clears throat> with uh there there is actually some like cloth stuff that you can do inside of um inside of zbrush now so and this video is a little bit old um so maybe maybe we'd go through and find because i know that there we go this one's a little bit better this one's this one's from end of last year and this this one has some of the some of the cloth dynamics so so let's I'll, I'll refer you to this one uh, that'll be a good one to kind of go through and check out it's got some cool stuff there uh, let me see go ahead and draw across there draw across there I'm trying to I'm trying to draw across like the high points it's not it's not holding like the forward arc because of the um, I don't have like a line going through the middle, okay. Maybe we'll just we'll go ahead and put the line there. That's fine. Um, we got something like that going on there now. And then I'm going to try to see. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna not worry about. Putting that together yet I'm going to actually go ahead and I'll worry about creating the sleeve part here in just a just a minute um, I'm thinking I'm trying to think about what it is that I want this uh, this dress to do because on the back I kind of picture it going a couple of different ways um, I kind of picture this being Hold on just a second. Never mind. We're good. Let's say control one just to be able. Well, control one for me. That's one of those uh, hot hotkeys that I set. Hotkeys are the ways that I kind of go through and get around things. <clears throat> so like control M to be able to merge down, or control one to be able to isolate selected. It's just the same hotkey that I use in Maya. It's the basic. It's the it's the standard hotkey in Maya, but I have it so that it turns on solo, or I have Control T to be able to turn on transparency. Just simple little things like that to make it really just simple and streamlined. Um, really, really nice. So the thing that I'm thinking about with this particular piece of clothing, I'm thinking I'm going to have this go up. I know for sure that I want this to, to create kind of like a like a turtleneck piece here. Maya. It's gonna make my brush smaller so that it can handle being on that surface there. And you know what? We're gonna turn on the uh, lazy mouse radius. Turn it up something ridiculous like 60 ish. That way I can get a nice smooth line from it. So the idea that I have for this is I want it to essentially be some sort of um, some sort of cross. So like if we were to if she were to be you know standing just like with her arms at her side, I want these uh, these straps that are going from her chest onto her arms. I want those to feel kind of like the uh, like the like the like the horizontal 
section of uh, of a of like a Catholic cross. Um, so I'm going to do something like this. And I'm going to do something like this. Oh, actually, I guess not quite like that. I want this to go. How's this going to go? Okay, that's better. And we'll take this across and we will say, let's build that. We will build that just so that it kind of hits that high point. And, uh, you know, granted, this is something, this arm, this back arm is going to be kind of reposed to, to be brought up to, to kind of you know, support that skull, you support. <laughs> so, um, you tried both tutorials, both are working fine. Each can be used to create clothing for different character. Um, let's create green ready cloth assets. Yeah, ZBrush is awesome. I, I really do enjoy uh, things like that. You know, just just the, the power and the flexibility and the, you know, all these things that are so flexible and just all the power that goes into what you can create inside a ZBrush. This uh, this section over here, I, I'm, I'm thinking that what I want is to have it go across the two arms. Let's, have, let's, let's do that. But to not necessarily be, like I want this to feel like a Met Gala piece instead of like a, <laughs> which could be cool. <laughs> if uh, if somebody were to to dress up in this someday, <laughs> what you doing, Miss? All right, something like that, and then I'll I'll worry about bridging everything together once it's whole. Uh, since this is such a a low resolution piece, I should be able to bridge that together with Z Modeler without having to worry about things. Uh, without having to worry about things welding together. There we go. See if we can get this back. There we go. Okay. I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen down the rest of her body. Uh, I still need to figure out getting the uh, getting the the dress and everything in there. You know, whatever. Let's get the the draw size all the way down to one. Let's commit that piece. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I wanted to go ahead and get my I'll say the turtleneck piece kind of going in there. <laughs> Let's kind of 
pull that up so that it's going, going, going. Pull that down, pull that down. And then from right here, what I'm gonna do I'm just going to try to complete this like a like a piece of the section of the neck. In fact, maybe what we'll do is we'll do the the full neck bit here. around there we go Let's do something like that something like that I guess we'll just draw it on then. So there's a there's a trick that you can use, but I think it's because of my uh, my lazy mouse radius being so high that it doesn't want to recognize it. Um, where you can go through and, and essentially have ZBrush fill in these, or like like uh, like, what's the what's the word? Um, kind of create a circumference around an object, um, and it's super super helpful. draw this down it looks like it's let me so so we'll go ahead and we'll do that I'm going to need to you see how it's like there's a little bit of a dip right here I don't want there to be a dip I want that to be a nice flat surface right there so I'll have to go through and manually uh, fix that once I create the mesh but yeah it'll be easy enough just go ahead and keep drawing that down and now that's good yeah so now we've got this now we can go ahead and put our draw size to one commit that and we'll say uh, split unmasked so you can see this is what we're left with so if I if I come down here and we'll say display properties double, you can see that's that's our piece. Bridge edges, boom. So that's there, and uh, it's it's off to it's off to the races. There's a lot left to do on it, you know, like we were talking about. And kind of pulling this section out, pulling that out, making sure that's a nice kind of flat line going across. But she's started. She is started. In fact, what we'll do real quick, just to make sure this is kind of standing out, let's just hit inflate a little bit.
come over here and pick like a, a good medium golden yellow sort of color. I want something a little bit more saturation, a little bit more yellow, something like that. There we go. Now Mick, now Mick can't uh, complain that she's less clad than she ought to be. Oh, she still is. <laughs> She'll get there. She'll get there. She'll get there. She'll get there. Yeah. So we're definitely going to have to post a picture of this on my stories on Instagram and see how that goes. Yeah. I'm still trying to decide. In fact, let's use the uh, the transpose line just to be able to measure point oops point seven five uh point seven five ish from shoulder to elbow ish point seven nine so that's much longer is that right yeah it looks like this is still quite a bit longer Let's go ahead and mask that out. And then we'll just kind of move it up a little bit. That's a little bit too much. There we go. It's quite a bit better. Okay. Now the uh, the lower arm now feels a little bit too long, so we'll just do the same thing. You know, just kind of mask that out. Let's check our length. So we'll go from the elbow to the wrist, 0.56, which means that that's probably too short. Here, let's let's go through and actually uh, lengthen this one out. I don't need this to be like point ten. Yeah, something like that. A little bit better. Okay. Just need to shrink that down just a smidge. Okay, that's looking much better. The legs look super long now because of it. I think I think that the proportions of this upper body make it feel a lot more childlike. So I think what I'm going to have to do <clears throat> is grab. Yeah, she definitely feels like way too young. And I do want her to feel a little bit older. Oh man, update time. Oh, it's nine o'clock too. I want to take Take 
this. Oops, I need to grab that too. Push that torso just a bit. Might be too much, something like that. Okay. I like how that one's feeling. This one feels short and stumpy. So because of the, I'm, I'm trying to look at like the, the tilt of the shoulders and looking at where the, sh where the elbows are coming to, I need that to, to feel like it's about the same angle. And that'll help me get it to be a little bit more on track. Um, Do glasses or a monocle? I always use uh, I always use Z Modeler. In fact, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, in fact, I I uh, I participated in the ZBrush Summit. Let me let me pull up my my channel real quick. Cause I was I was part of the the ZBrush the ZBrush Sculpt Off. You can see I've got my <laughs> amazingly 90 views. Um, here's what I what I did and so I, I go through and I um, I kind of show just simple process for being able to create the glasses using initialized cylinders um, oh you know what it doesn't I don't actually show how I do the the glass though but I I do the glass by using what I use to be able to create the uh, the actual frame um, let me send you guys this um, I'm pretty sure I have something with glasses. There we go. I think this is just a time lapse. But I'm also pretty sure that this has like the actual glasses with the with the lenses and things like that in it. Um, yeah, so whenever I'm trying to do deal with something, I, I try to keep the materials somewhat, um, somewhat related to, to what it is that they represent. Um, the, one of the hard things about ZBrush is that you can't see transparency as you're working on things. Um, hopefully it's a feature that'll come sometime in the future uh, but it's it's definitely something that's not quite in the in the works yet but yeah somewhere somewhere in this uh, in this time-lapse video there is a there is a point where I do show creating the actual lenses for the glasses using the frames from the glasses so so hopefully that's helpful um I mean, she still feels super young and I think a big part of that might be the size of her head so it might be just a matter of going in here and saying um, 
and the switch back to mask lasso. And purely because I don't want to like be modifying the head at all. <laughs> um, yeah, you can only see the transparency in render, which is, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard. <laughs> But it is what it is, um, and it still works. You know, you, it's it's just a matter of turning off whatever you don't want to have uh, blocking your view while you're working. Uh, whatever's supposed to have transparency, and then whenever you have transparency, you can turn it turn it back on. Um, one way to kind of do that right now with this version of ZBrush um, is that you can go through and you can have a, a folder of transparency enabled objects and you can just turn that folder on and off so you don't have to worry about turning on lots of different objects. Um, or or something that's really kind of cool about the, the coming version is that they'll have like those those visibility, I forget what they called it, uh, they talked about it inside of the ZBrush Summit, it's the, the visibility tabs, I guess, uh, where the visibility sets where you can say, you know, visibility, and it's just at the top of sub tool, it'll be like right up, right up here, right above, uh, right next to the visibility count. Um, you'll have like the, like eight, like eight different visibility sets where you can say, you know, these things are visible for this set, these things are visible for this set, these, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's an awesome feature. I'm super excited about it. see let's go ahead and kind of make this body just a ooh just like a small small amount bigger there we go she's instantly older purely because I just changed the size of her body like the proportion of her body to her head ah awesome I love simple little clicks like that. It's it's awesome. It's just so good. <laughs> now the end result for this particular character is I want to to. Um, I mean, I've thought about a couple of different things. Uh, for instance, I thought about oh, I need to save. I need to save. I don't have my friend uh, Quint. Quinn's here. Uh, Quinn's not here today, so he's not here to tell me every few minutes to save. <laughs> or Prashan. Prashan's always telling me to to save. Yeah, I've got some good buddies. Um, it's uh, it's it's always important to save, just so you know. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that. Uh, I totally lost what I was gonna say. I totally lost. the proportions though, you know, just that simple little simple little fact of how the proportions of the body to the head uh, totally help with age. That's that's amazing. I think for right, uh, I'll leave. I'll, I'll keep the shoes on for now. But. Uh, Let's see. Let's go ahead and select those. And then uh, remember, we've got like that extra point over here that I'm going to need to control. <laughs> oh, in fact, here, let's do this instead. I'm going to keep this masked. And then, oh yeah, the end result is to actually take this and have her rendered in Arnold. Um, I'm, I'm trying to learn a little bit of Bifrost so I can create actual um, actual hair or not hair, sorry, uh, actual fire for for the skull over here. Uh, 
Oh, interesting. I didn't realize that was going to be taken along for the ride. I didn't realize it was separate from the shoe. <laughs> it's funny. I have something kind of like kind of like this for now. You'll see like there's the there's the weird hole being created by that point that got vert welded. Yeah, it's kind of irritating, but whatever. We will put up with it. Okay, so from right here, I'm trying to just come in. Um, I'm going to have to kind of change and um, re-sculpt her calves on this, especially on this uh, on this leg since before it was it was crossed and it was kind of propped over the knee um, um, since it's uh since it's being since it was being over the knee the the calf was kind of being pushed off to the side um but since i'm bringing it down now um, i'm going to need to Oh, here's something I need to do as well. Let's save spotlight. I'm gonna call this. Uh, oh, let's let's just call this D T I Y S. Um, smartest twenty one underscore spotlight. That way, it kind of follows the same naming convention as our file as well. So it's kind of nice. Um, since this is longer and in a different position than the rest of the body now, I'm just going to kind of use this as a little bit of a guide. I'm just going to pull this back some. And we'll kind of pull this up a little bit too. <laughs> That's something I needed to to remember. Just kind of pull this up just a little bit so that it feels a little bit more like the concept to some extent. Oops, we'll invert that, bring this over, oops. So now I need to go through, invert my mask on my shoe pieces. This little piece is such a pain, but <laughs> we'll fix it later. <laughs> yeah, Houdini is awesome. I've I've actually it's been forever, but one of the things that I really loved about um, about where I went to school is being able to be. introduced to so many awesome different pieces of software um, and since I since I teach at Nomen I have access to, to pretty much any of the software that I wanted to be able to, to access as well now um, so that's that's always super 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 cool um, yeah, being able to access software just for the sake of being able to learn and to grow, uh, be able to figure out different things. I don't know, just just being able to experiment and test things out 
it's so awesome and it's so so helpful how to find a job in the animation industry that's a very good question uh there are a lot of <laughs> there are a lot of pathways to getting in and it's it's different depending on each individual um there are a lot of very talented individuals out there who have different challenges because of either proximity to um you know for instance like you know, friends of mine who are down in mexico or in brazil or um in remote countries in in africa or europe um yeah, there are one of the nice things is that there's always freelance freelance is is kind of nice and it's it's a good gateway uh to be able to get your feet wet to get familiar with uh the tools and um, yeah I, I i i really highly recommend like playing around with and, and really getting into good freelance and a lot of that's going to come from how you talk to people and who you talk to. So trying to get involved with different uh, different online groups, uh, you know, coming to streams is a great way because there will be people in the chat or there'll be people, um, yeah, even just the things that you'll learn, uh, the, the people that you'll meet, things like that, That'll that'll help to begin to familiar familiarize you with what's there with what's available uh, and it'll also help to um, familiarize others with you so it's a it's a really important little thing is just to be to be present to be around um, let's kind of smooth that out some Some of the other things that I recommend is uh, just exploring. Um, keep up your morale because it takes a while. Like even after you've gotten into the industry, uh, pushing to get your next job or uh, or your next show or your next project, whatever it is, uh, even within the same company, it's a uh, it can be it can be a challenge, and so. It's important to keep yourself um, to keep up your morale. I'm, I'm going to keep it like put it that way because it's it's that's really pretty much what it is. Because um, there will be times where times where it's easy to to get and keep a good job and other times where it's not so easy um it's a it's an it's an insanely uh competitive field <laughs> and um i try to make it a point to say so when i'm asked because you know, I, f I feel like I understood that it was going to be competitive before I, you know, like as I was going through school and things like that. Um, but I never understood quite how much. And I think people didn't really set me up for that as I was. Uh, um as I was going through school, you know, so it's, 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 it's nice to kind of know a little bit about, <laughs> you know, that it's hard, you know, not to go into it with that rose colored lens of, uh, you know, it's going to be sunshine and daisies. And you know, even once you have your, your dream job, if you will, there's still, there's still challenges that come with it. So, so kind of keep your, keep your head held high, keep your, you know, keep practicing keep working at it um keep networking um keep learning new things um and then don't be 
afraid to just do what you need to to take care of yourself you know because that's that's the most important thing um you know there will be times where you know if the jobs are not coming as easily as as you need them to be <laughs> uh you might have to take up a job that's not quite what you want or a job that's not related at all and i know a lot of people that um have gone out and taken a, a whatever job while things were super dry and uh, some people who have changed careers entirely like one guy that i went to school with he changed he changed careers entirely i mean he was uh trying to push into animation with me and everything and then he uh decided uh after he he didn't get admitted to the program that um he's just going to go into accounting and that's kind of like the uh, the stereotypical kind of story that everybody tells of like oh, I'm not going I'm not I didn't get into the program or I'm not getting into the industry so I'm just going to be an accountant. Uh, kind of funny on the one hand, but also kind of you know hard on the other, especially if it's your story. But um, you know, don't be afraid to to do what you need to to take care of yourself, but don't be afraid to dream. Oh wow, that focal shift is really, really high. Okay. Um, one of the other things, I'm gonna pull a snake hook out here just so we can Whoa, no color, please. Um, but yeah, so so some of the most important things, networking, um, you know, being, being, uh, networking and being present, um, always being kind of pushing to be the, on the top of the game. Um, The job that I have currently uh, with Netflix is one that I have because uh, my art director, he took my class at Nomen and, uh, and when we were, you know, when the class was, was through, he's like, Hey, uh, you want a job? <laughs> it, it was, it was that's how that's how that one went you know when i was working for walt disney imagineering uh the way that i got that job was because of a friend uh from dreamworks that where i where i was at before then um he connected me with uh, an art director over at imagineering who was looking for a 3d modeler and and that's how i how i made that connection you know it's it's a very uh it's it's you, you never know kind of like what connection is going to stick and you never know what what job is it going to end up being your favorite you know it's it's always kind of kind of an interesting series of battles if you will um trying to make sure that you balance all those you know try to figure things out but also just throwing yourself at things that you know for the sake of making sure that um that you're trying out avenues in case in case the next avenue is the is the right one or in case the you know there's so much to it there's so much to it but yeah that's that's kind of my my input you know always practicing always improving um like for me streaming and and doing these little uh personal projects this has been a huge and teaching too um they've been huge for helping me to to grow to get better um and to be something that you know um you know to be to be ready to be employable to be <laughs> 
this uh, this elbow right here. Right now you can see it, it looks horrible. So I'm just gonna smooth it out and I'll re-sculpt it so that it's in a better, uh, <laughs> so it's in a better spot. Uh, but yeah, one of the things that I that I did regularly while I was going through school is I would uh, send my portfolio as it was to people that I had met from the industry. Um, people who were alumni from um, from where I from where I went to school uh, people who would come out to provide mentoring for um, for our program things like that and by doing that I got to be on their radar but then I also got to um, but then I also got to learn things about individual studios and studio culture. I got to learn things about uh, what the studios are looking for. I got to learn things about you know, just just all sorts of things, right? Um, but then I also got to be on their radar. I got to be, you know, I got to begin to you know, come into contact with these people who who could in the future vouch for me if uh, if opportunity came for a job. You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, so currently, I'm working at uh, just to be able to get to, to your to your question there, uh, get some tap. <laughs> um, let me see talk a little bit about yourself just an interest uh, what kind of job you're working in which industry field you're working in what company you're working for um, what's your personal hobbies yeah so um, hobbies I'm trying to vary that a little bit more lately because I feel like I'm always so tied to a computer screen because my favorite thing to do is sculpt. I love working on personal project and things like that. It's such a, a relaxing thing to me and it's invigorating to kind of play my ideas out on a, in ZBrush. Um, but I also recognize that um, being attached to a screen as I am like all day every day <laughs> it's uh, it's not necessarily the most enriching thing <laughs> you know I don't get to interact with my with my wife and kids as much you know just just little things like that and so lately what I've been trying to do is vary my my personal hobbies uh, so that's that's for that's for that hobby question um, currently I'm working at Netflix animation um, as a 3D concept, um, 3D concept modeler. So a lot of what I do is kind of, it's like 3D design and, um, and it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's great. It's such a good job. Um, it's, it's very challenging, uh, because it's, it, it, challenges you to think in a very different way than you know, like if you've if you've done modeling for um, for animation or for games or for anything else before you know kind of like the rules of topology and like how how proper you need to be with certain things in order for them to work right and um, but with concept modeling it's not so much about having something that's production ready as it is something that's designed and and that's kind of the main goal of my job uh, is is working through the design so that it works in 3d um, I think that's a little bit too thick. 
I'm, I'll have to I'll have to play with this. Um, okay, let's do something like that. Um, yeah, currently I'm working on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, you know, it's 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 rare in the animation industry uh, to be able to talk about your projects <laughs> that you're working on professionally. So it's 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 nice to be able to say at least what I what I am working on, uh, because that's one of those things that's you know you have to wait until it's been announced and those sorts of things. Um, and fortunately, my project has been announced, so so it's really kind of nice. And in fact, the uh, Netflix has recently acquired the Roll Doll Company, so there are all sorts of things that uh, that we're going to get to do because of uh, you know because we own it now, we own the rights. <laughs> Uh, this is going to take a lot of playing, but this is going to be well worth getting it right. Um, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, so currently currently I'm working in, in animation. Uh, it's episodic. Um but I've also worked in animated film. I worked on How to Train Your Dragon 3 for DreamWorks Animation as a 3D modeler. And then I also worked, uh, I've worked in theme parks and, uh, oh shoot, um, yeah, themed entertainment. Uh, I worked for Walt Disney Imagineering and uh, designed and built things for theme parks, for the Disneyland theme parks around the world. And that was awesome. Um, I've done things for Hasbro. Uh, I've done my own toys. Uh, I've worked at Warner Brothers Games. Uh, I worked on um, what's it called, Hogwarts Legacy, which you know I'm super excited for that to come out at some point in whatever future. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure when it's supposed to actually come out. I think it was. Well, I mean. Okay, so just to kind of give you a little bit of perspective, I worked on it in 2012, uh, 2017, and um, you know, just before I came down to LA for DreamWorks uh, to work on How to Train Your Dragon, um, that game, Hogwarts Legacy, I think it's not supposed to finish until like I think it's supposed to release maybe next year but I can't remember for sure <laughs> it's always kind of crazy uh, yeah okay I'm really liking this so far I'm liking where it's going I think I definitely need to uh, I need to fix a couple of things but I'm not going to worry about it for right now um, I've already kind of gone past my 9 o'clock hour which is where I wanted to kind of stop but we'll uh, so we'll call it we'll call it good for right now um, I guess one last thing I'll do before before calling it good for the night, let's let's uh, save it. Um, I want to come in here and I want to see if I can find. Huh. I don't have her in here. I thought I did. Maybe I just don't. Um, I I I have. Oh, you know what? Maybe I have it in down here. Let's look. Uh oh. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. Let's say ZBrush. Death. Calavera. So this is a uh, skull that I sculpted. <laughs> so I sculpt again in two weeks. So not next Friday, but the Friday after that. Um, and I'm really only kind of going through... Um, like I, I typically, I will typically... Uh, go on like Saturday mornings um, but one of the things I wanted to be able to do is have Saturday mornings to be able to help get the kids uh, to a special activity and to be able to enjoy some time with my wife you know so so uh, since since those activities only go through this next month uh, I'll get to kind of go back to to uh, to morning streaming Shun. Okay, let's go ahead and let's say uh, append. Um, you know, there there are some really good things to uh, being able to stream. You know, in the morning, but it gets to be kind of kind of tricky too because a lot of people can't uh, can't always. attend and let's go ahead and kind of place this roughly I'm gonna to have to stylize this but this is kind of a, a block in point to be able to make sure that I <laughs> what do you think bud cool but I'm on this side and just put it in the um, next. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Well, it's doing it so that it's so that's the right way forward. Uh, one of the things that happens when, um, like, if we we're using Zoom, uh, we would see it so that it's the other way around. Or if we were using a mirror, we'd see it so it's the other way around. But instead, it's showing it the right way, the right way around. Like, can you see? Can you see the word Netflix right there? Mm -hmm. See how it's the right way around. So when you look in a mirror, words are backwards, but in a camera, it's forward. Wait, are you still all the same? I am. I'm just going through and trying to answer some questions real quick. I'm going to have to go through and play with that hand for sure. But... <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, let me see. Let me see. It's quite annoying to have a passion for what you feel like you want to do, although I don't know if I have the passion or not because I haven't even started. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. And it's one of those things, too, where it's like uh, at first I was super interested in being a, uh, a storyboard artist. Um, while I was in, while I was at the university, and um, after my first few professional storyboarding gigs, uh, I discovered I hated it. I enjoy doing it for myself. I enjoy story storyboarding my own, um, my own ideas and things like that. But I hated doing it for other people. Um, modeling, 3D modeling, 3D stuff is where I feel like I've always kind of come back and I've really enjoyed it and had fun. Um, and that's where I feel like my, my strengths lie too. So it's it's kind of fun. It's, it's just the way it goes. Uh, sounds like you're happy in the role of the community you've chosen for. It sounds like you're a happy guy, which uh like to accomplish challenges. Yes. Uh, I, I enjoy overcoming challenges. <laughs> it's it's always there there are always hard things to do, but it's it's definitely um yeah, I mean as as long as you feel like you have found something that you're passionate about, the challenges become easier to bear. Um 
it's it's definitely very hard work but it's definitely very uh very rewarding um, cloth part of the shoulder no i actually i actually want to keep it down where it is because i like the way that the gravity makes it feel um yeah so so that's actually a, a conscious choice right here is that it's it's drooping it's draping down across her back and things like that uh, good eyes it's, it's definitely not the same as the concept but i i like i like the feeling that this has better i feel like it has much more uh gravity and and quality of life to it so so that's that's why i have it like that a beginner z brush uh, what kind of practice do you recommend one of the things that i um that i've had my students do a ton of in the past is speed sculpts um pick a theme just like a like a simple word like an adjective um like burned or melted or you know like just something simple like a simple adjective word and and then do a do a like a one to three hour sculpt on it like nothing nothing to kind of push yourself to have something totally finished or totally portfolio ready it's just a, a way for you to be able to say all right, I'm trying to think of how I'm going to sculpt this thing. Like one time I did wooden. Um, and so I did this this horse. Ashley, how you doing? <laughs> Long time no see. <laughs> Let me see if I can get you to this. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess let's, let's do this. We'll go back. Uh-oh, it froze. It froze. And let's close a couple of these. Um, it's one of those things that I, I did as a quick practice, you know, just to be able to, like, I did this, this hell horse, you know, like, like <laughs> this, uh, this really crazy thing that's pieced together of a whole bunch of pieces of wood. And it was just something that to be able to challenge myself and try something different, um, you know, I was able to sculpt the fire, I was able to sculpt the the wood. Um, and it's just part of this this no spare time challenge that I run. Um, yeah, so lots of lots of fun. So find find little little challenges like that that you can that you can do and that'll help to, to push your skills and your and your abilities. Um, find find art challenges, find communities, uh, watch watch live streams. You're already doing that. So that's that's great. Um, you know, doing, doing art challenges and, and watching streams, those are helpful things to be able to really instruct you and inform you, but then also to put things into practice in a very quick turn, uh, time, time frame. Um, these, these quick sculpts that you want to do, they're, they're meant to be more of like a, of a, of like a sketch of like a, like a, I mean, like this is this is not something that's, you know, it's not a full creature and something that's, you know, an absolute finalized piece or whatever. But it's something that I have in my in my speed sculpts folder and art station because it's pretty stinking cool. You know, it's fun. And it's something that I did to be able to push myself and learn and and be able to push myself in my presentation, too. So. Um so yeah, it's just thinking about little little things. What it is you want to learn, and then develop a challenge for yourself around that, or find a challenge that can help you to to push that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I saw that Weta had just been acquired by Unity. Oh my gosh, that blows my mind. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they uh, what they do now. That that's now that that's a thing, uh, how do you manage your work time in a day with all this stuff going on? I don't. <laughs> I I try to make sure that I that I focus on the task at hand. Um, you know, if if uh, if I'm if I if I'm talking to my wife, it's time to talk to my wife. If it's uh, you know, if it's decompression time then i i jump on my phone you know or you know if it's 
if it's uh if it's work time i'm focused on my work you know and i'm i'm just doing stuff and trying to make sure that i'm compartmentalizing things as much as possible and trying to stay focused on the things that i have going on so that way i can finish things and i don't have to worry about you know not having the time <laughs> Hey, cool. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, let me see. How do you keep in contact with people and you've networked with all sorts of different ways? Networking is awesome. There are so many different avenues to go in to be able to to network. I love places like Instagram or Facebook. And the thing that I try pardon me. The thing that I try to do first and foremost is create relationships. Um it's so much easier most of the time to uh, to get feedback from somebody who feels like they are uh, you know invested in your in your happiness and your well-being and so if somebody's your friend before they give you feedback it's it's and especially if it's somebody that is already established in the industry you know it becomes so much better um, so much better so so yeah I mean, I, I've always tried to, to go through and kind of just stay in contact with people through through Instagram uh, through Facebook through just social medias just just however it is that I am um, <laughs> I didn't say I was always very good at it Ashley <laughs> but I try <laughs> Um, I definitely try, um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, j'ai perdu my thought. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, keep keeping in 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 contact with people in a in a friend sort of way, contact uh you know, whatever whatever seems to to work. <laughs> yeah. I still try. I I do my best, right? Um we're all human. Um Yeah, sometimes I can just sit and just stay focused for a long period of time like with this. Like I mean, I've I've been working on sitting on working on this for the last few hours, and and it's been fun. It's great, and that's kind of how I how I stay focused most of the time, is I just let it get uh, let it get let myself get lost in it in a sense. But yeah. Um. But yeah, you also want to you also want to keep in mind when you're networking, uh, whatever way seems to be the most comfortable to the person you're networking with. Uh, for me personally, social media is the best way to to, to stay in contact. Um, you know, I have a lot of people who go through and they'll just respond to my stories or they'll respond to my posts or or all and 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 when they do. I go through and I usually take that time to go ahead and check out their profiles to see what they're up to. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of like the easiest way for me to follow people. <laughs> what procedure did you use to make the fire? Houdini, Maya, particles, post-production. Um, the fire that I used for the hell horse here, it was just sculpted inside a ZBrush. Um, it's really quite simple. It's really, really fun. I used some snake hook, uh, pulled it around. Uh, this one's Photoshop. <laughs> no, but it's uh, but it's really really great. It's just super fun, um, playing around with it. Uh, when I do when I do fire or when I do hair, it's very similar in the way that it that it that I play with it, the way that I think about it, because it's going to have a base wherever it's burning from. It's um, it's combustion source. <laughs> 
and then it's going to have the flow just like hair you know your hair's got its its source like the root and then it's going to have its its flow wherever it's going to and my hair's not very long anymore because i just cut it today um but yeah that's kind of that's kind of the thing you think about the source where it's coming from and then flow or where it's going to what's affecting it you know the uh the the, the air movement the gravity uh if it's wet or whatever you know fire if fire is wet it's not fire anymore right you know whatever <laughs> so yeah little things like that um slightly old school most people i network on phone numbers and just call them up and check in on them and their families that's great that's great yeah uh i've I've never done very well with uh, with an actual voice chat on the phone. There are a couple of people that I love talking to on the phone, like my wife being one of them. Um, otherwise, I just find it hard to understand people on the phone, and so it's always very hard for me to come to 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 have a conversation, to really talk with people on the phone. Uh, I much prefer to either be in person or to have some form of text. Uh, one, it leaves me with a record of what it was that was said. So if I need, if I forget, and I can, I can go back and and kind of revise and, 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 and like like review and and see what it is that was said. Um, but yeah, lots of different lots of different ways that you can go about it. Um, yeah, WhatsApp for for like being international and things like that. That's a great idea. Let me see. Yeah. Well, cool. I think we're gonna call it a night then. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with me for a little while. Uh, that was a fun project and I mean, she's, she still has a long way to go and we still need to pose her hands. Um, I need to finish dealing with like her, her, her feet and her legs. Um, I need to build out her dress and then I need to also start building out the flowers for, you know, her crown, uh, for her feet the veil i need to stylize this skull lots and lots of things going on um let's go ahead and pop a little let's turn on perspective i guess that could be cool but yeah shift s to be able to screenshot that in there then we'll pop her down here too so that she's a little bit closer a little bit more personal you know but yeah yeah super super fun Let's save too before we, before we don't. <laughs> thanks for thanks for coming and hanging out. Yeah, Arcane Act Two. I am so excited. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I can't wait because it's like it's it's one of those things. <laughs> oh, so you're gonna? Hey, Dark. Are you are you waiting for all of them to come out before you start watching any of them? So you can just binge watch the full series, or are you doing, or are you just gonna re rewatch them all out of binge? I, I, that's probably what I'll do. In fact, I'm thinking about going and uh, I'm thinking about going through and and uh, once I finish going through the series, I'll rewatch it in Spanish or something like that, just to keep my Spanish up. But yeah, anyway, super fun. I enjoy having you guys around. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me tonight. Uh, or wherever you are in the world, whatever part of the, t the day you're in, uh, thanks for coming and hanging out. <laughs> I know for Ashley, you're like super late right now. Good grief, girl. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm having fun. If you're interested in joining the um, the the Draw This In Your Style Challenge, let me go ahead and, and drop my link to my... Um, to my Instagram. Um, go check out the the page. You, um, if you're interested in joining the DTIYS on this, um, I I am having a contest involved with it. I try to do a contest uh, a contest draw this in your style every year. If you're interested in drawing it, or if you're interested in uh, in sculpting it, or whatever, uh, feel free to go about it however you want to. The um, the winner, uh, my my of my my favorite uh, entry from the from the competition is going to get my course, which I have plugged all the way over there in the far corner. Um, 
you can see her right over here uh, you'll get a you'll get a free link to that it gives you an error no way oh my goodness why isn't that working Here, let's do this then I'll go to the profile I'll, I'll send you guys to the actual post so that way you guys don't have to worry about <laughs> going to the wrong thing control copy man that should work if it doesn't work I don't know why that didn't work to have it go to my profile that's really really weird uh, but anyway it's there now you guys got it yeah so yeah if you're interested in, in joining the uh, the course is oh, the course is let's go over here this right here um, it's a it's it's the full course essentially exactly what I teach at Noman so it talks about character design it talks about going through and you know full production topology um, I, don't, I guess I don't have more pictures on here than I thought I had um, yeah full full production topology and and principles for for proper edge flow maybe I'll go over here to flip normals Ale. I thought I had it. I don't know why nothing seems to be working right now. Good grief. Okay, there we go. Uh, view store. Here we go. I'm pretty sure I've got more pictures in this one. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I go through the full process, you know, full full body production topology. So we start from a sphere. Uh, we match it up with the concept. Um, talk about, you know, how I go through my, my techniques for creating hair. Talk about prepping things for 3D print, cutting and engineering it for 3D print. Um, I even go through and do a, a demo on clothing and different body, uh, different facial expressions. Oh, I'll go back to it. So yeah, so you see like different facial expressions so that so that you know we can cover the ideas of what it is that's that's needed to make sure that this this course is something that's full and complete. So if you're interested in, in winning that, um full course, you know, should be really, really fun. It's really great. I've had a lot of people go through and purchase the course. Um you know, jump on and and uh and uh, join the DTIYS. Uh, yes, I do a lot of my <laughs> go now for real. <laughs> yeah, um, I do do a lot of my retopo inside of ZBrush, but then I also do stuff in Maya. So, um, and I, and I talk I talk about that. I cover that in the whole course. So, so yeah. Um, good luck. You know, come feel free to come join that that challenge, and I will talk to you guys next time I see you. Uh, if you're interested in seeing me stream again, I will be on here on this channel again in two weeks. So I'll see you. Hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time I see you. Oh, oh. Smartest out.